Hi, I'm Bob Knoten. On this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, I'm going to show you how I install the cylinder liners in a Jaguar V12 engine. Pretty simple job, but it's the details that matter. Dang it. First of all, let's take a look at the two types of liners that I use. First of all, you'll notice that they appear to be virtually identical. And they are in terms of dimensions. Uh, but this one right here, this one is used. This is a resized one, 10 thousandths oversize. I've gone to the oversize liners because there for a long time I had a difficulty getting new liners from my normal retailers. So it was just as easy to just take the old liners, clean them up, and uh, have them oversized 10,000. Another reason why I will be continuing to use these in some circumstances is that there's a lot more different ring styles available for a slightly larger bore than it is for the standard XJS, XKE bore. These will continue to be part of my future uh, indefinitely. These, on the other hand, are the new ones. Brand spanking new. Look at that. Brand new liners have started to become more and more readily available at a more reasonable price. So in applications where I need to use a standard bore, this actually is the most cost-effective way to go if you can get a hold of these. And I'm told by others that uh, there's really no problem getting these at this point. These are actually more expensive because it takes quite a bit of time to, to uh, get these things sized properly by people who know what they're doing. So actually this is about, I would say, a 30% more expensive liner than the stock one. But again, I found that there's a lot more ring styles available for a slightly bigger bore uh, than are available for the stock one. That's why I'm using these two different styles of liner. Now, if you're going to be reusing your liners, they check out to be in spec in terms of diameter, in terms of out of round and also taper. You also need to be taking a look at these liners right about here. And this is an area where in the past, in fact, I'm told the Jaguar had a real problem with this early on in the introduction of the Jaguar V12, they can get cracks through. I guess they can get them anywhere, but it's most prevalent in these areas here where it's milled down a little bit. And that's really important because maybe you took your engine apart because it was overheating and you thought you had a cylinder head gasket problem, but turned out you had a cracked liner and you put the same cracked liner back in again. Not a good idea. Another reason why I use these liners is that my view is that if these things made it to 100,000 miles and they didn't crack, then they're seasoned. Then they're, they're, in all probability, not going to crack. That's a good liner. So I don't know if the new liners have the same problem as the older liners had, but again, I use the Survivor liners and have had good luck so far. Prior to the installation of the liners, you gotta do a little cleanup. As you get them back from the machine shop, if you had them hone them for you or you've done it yourself, uh, you need to get these things really clean. Otherwise, you could uh, damage the piston rings and the skirts of the pistons. Uh, nothing good happens when you put dirty liners in the block. And what I do is a pretty simple thing. It's just a matter of getting a couple of buckets of warm water and one of them with soap in it. And then you just simply take and, and scrub it and you scrub it until you know with some paper towels or a sponge or something until until uh, you can run a paper towel through it and not pick up any dirt and then you just rinse it in the uh, the warm uh, clear water and then uh, dry them out make sure you get them dry right away because you will notice flash rust on them very very quickly so uh, at that point then once you got 12 liners that are all clean and dry you're ready to put them in. Now these are cylinder liners that I have resized to 10 thousandths of an inch over. They're original 
cylinder liners out of the engine. And uh, I have a special fixture that I put them in and torque them into so that it simulates the, uh, the liner being in the actual vehicle. And it does make about a thousandth of an inch difference up here. When you pull them out of the jig, this is about a thousandth of an inch. It's kind of a barrel shaped thousandth of an inch up here. It starts out small, gets a little bigger and you know, goes back to, to the stock bore again. And that's because of the compression of this portion of the uh, liner in between the block. And I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but I can't imagine that it uh, would do anything but help in terms of seating the piston rings. So anyway, the way to put these things in is, as I said, this part of the barrel or the liner gets sandwiched in between a boss in the block and the cylinder head. And this fits in a boss inside of the inside of the block to within just a few thousandths of an inch. So what we need to do here, being that this is exposed to the uh, water jacket here, it's a wet deck engine, uh, we've got to seal this. And what I use for this purpose is blue hylamar, and it's just a matter of squeezing it into this corner down here. And don't squeeze the tube too hard because once you let go of it, it'll continue to it'll continue to uh, bleed out. Okay, what's going on here? There we go. It'll continue to bleed out. There's no real good way to relieve the pressure of it. So kind of quit applying pressure early and yep, it's still going. So. Got a couple air bubbles in there. All right. Then what I do is I take my finger <clears throat> and I just kind of rotate this around, stick a little extra down in there where it's kind of thin, just to make absolutely certain that that it uh, it seals, and then just kind of go around. Same thing on this side. Doesn't matter if you get any on the barrel here. And. and just walk it around like that. It doesn't take a whole lot to seal. As I said, the barrel here fits to within a few thousandths of an inch of the, uh, of the boss that it slides into. Here, you can see right here, this boss that it fits into, you need to make sure that this is clean up here. There's no debris on that, of course. And carefully, because it is a fairly tight fit, just gently move it back and forth. If it's not working, pull it out and start again, because you can get it jammed in there. Once you get it in an inch or so, then it just slides right down. At this point, we need to make sure that these cylinder liners stay down against the boss in the block that they're seated against, and that they need to be held down until the time that we actually put the cylinder heads on the engine. Uh, the only times we're gonna take them off is when we put the uh, the pistons in. And as, as soon as we get these two pistons here installed, that's gonna go back on again, because as we turn the crankshaft around while we're doing that operation, if we don't do this, we could actually pop these out. And then what we gotta do is we gotta <clears throat> pull the pistons and connect the rods out and reseal them. And, and you just don't wanna have to do that. So what I've made here is a number of these this is, I believe, 11 gauge flat steel and a piece of, I think it's half inch plumbing tubing. And they're made so that they fit like that. And you put a washer on here. Spin a 716's fine thread nut on there and then tighten it down. Doesn't have to be super tight, just enough to seat the, seat the liners. And uh, you're out of the danger zone. You know, there's no way these things are gonna come loose. Um, I used to have a set 
for both the top and the bottom, but over time it just got unnecessary. It just took a lot of extra time to, to do this operation and also put the pistons in. Oh, one other thing you want to do is take some carb cleaner on a rag and clean the tops of the, uh, the cylinder liners to make sure that you don't have any high Lamar on top there because that could potentially affect the seal uh, between the cylinder liner and the cylinder head. Um, and also check to make sure that you've got, that you've removed any, uh, any high Lamar from the inside of the bore. Uh, I don't know if that would be a big problem, and I suppose if you got enough of it in there, it could be, but uh, yeah, there we go. We're ready to put pistons, rings, and connecting rods in. Now, one more thing that I would add is that you probably notice that along the bottom edge of the liner where it fits up against the block, after I got done holding down with the black clamps, these liners, that there was a fairly significant amount of squeeze out of the high Lamar down along this bottom edge. I don't like to see that normally, but I'll tell you what, the consequences of this leaking is so significant that I'd rather err on the side of having a little bit of squeeze out. But what I do before I put the heads on, it's probably a few days before that actually happens. I'll take a bamboo skewer, a long one, uh, you know, the barbecue shish kebab type, and carve the bottom edge as sort of a chisel point, and then I kind of work it around and uh, remove as much as possible. And if you wait a few days, it sort of sets up a little bit to the point where it just kind of comes off in a rope rather than smearing off. And uh, I also do that in the exterior of the engine as well. It just makes things a little bit easier. Plus, you don't want to have big ropes of our TV on the inside of your engine that can break loose and, you know, plug up radiators and that sort of thing. So if you like these videos, like, subscribe, maybe leave a comment down below so that we can know what we can do to do what we do better. So we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.